Hi, it's Simon Hackney again. Um, we're going to have a small tutorial this morning. It's going to be really easy. And um, what we're going to actually do, we're going to work on this, which is a 7x5 canvas board. Okay, not expensive. And um, I think we'll do some sort of maybe sunsetty type thing. I think we'll work in acrylic and try and make it nice and easy for beginners out there that want to have a go. And uh, I hope you, you'll actually have a try at this one, Let's see what you can do with it. Um, I will try and keep it as basic as I can because I know um, sometimes when people are starting they, they become very intimidated by the um, the procedure, you know, you think, oh my god, you know, you look at the finished item and if it's too complex, you think, well, I'll never be able to do that. So we'll do this in stages, we'll do it in steps. We'll keep it very, very simple, uh, very simple shapes, maybe some silhouettes or something, a silhouette with some description in the foreground. Uh, some water, because I always like water in my work, as you know. Also, if you're um, joining me on the Facebook uh, Simon Hackney Art art group um, I'd like to say hi to you and uh, thank you for joining me I hope over the course of the group that we can share our work share ideas and uh, see how we all paint in um, in all different styles and using different uh, materials so with that let's crack on okay um, what I've got on the uh, board in front of me here is a 7x5 canvas board and um, as I said we're going to try and do some sort of sunsetty or sunrisey type thing anyway those sort of colours evening or early morning uh, we'll have some water in it but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some white gesso and I'm just going to give the canvas a coat of white gesso before I start with any colour and I'm just going to make sure that this is liberally coated so you've got a nice good coat of gesso on there work it into the canvas so that it actually goes into the tooth of the canvas and that will help us when we come to actually start applying the colour. I'd like to um, thank those of you that have subscribed to my channel and um, for the feedback you've given me and the support. It's been much more than I expected and um, it's, it's been a real help to me and it makes me want to carry on with this. So. Um, I hope you're enjoying it because of course while we're doing this we're not actually earning any money we're uh, <laughs> we're not doing full-on oil paintings to sell or anything like this this is strictly to um, help you guys out and and uh, hopefully inspire you to do your own artwork so I hope you're enjoying them if you do like them please hit the subscribe button and press the bell next to it and then you'll obviously be um, be informed every time I put a new tutorial on YouTube. Okay, well that's the gesso on. I'm just going to dry it out with a hairdryer and I'll be back shortly. Right, that's nice and dry. Now let's see about applying some paint. Quick drink of tea. As you know, you know me. A cup of tea always helps the day go by. Right, here's my palette. Okay, and you can see I've got um, all of the different hues, reds and blues and, and what have you on there. And I use the lid as a, as a mixing palette actually. and. Um, incorporate some um, slow dry medium on that and use it to mix the paints with and there we have the slow drying medium 
if my daughter's watching that's the one that she was asking me about and said she couldn't remember what it was called so there we have it so i'm just going to put a blob of that on the lid just there we can see that and really all this is it's like a glycerine that um just stops the paint from drying so quickly allows you to blend the paint more freely so taking a brush i think we'll have a flat brush there i'm going to go into my palette and i'm going to get some white mix that with some of the slow drying medium and we're just going to paint this just loosely across the canvas. I'm going to concentrate on the middle because that's going to be our lightest area. Or I think it is at the moment, but then you never know, these things are going to pan out. Now I'm going to take some cadmium yellow on the brush. Bring that back into here, mix it with a bit of that, blend it with the white, and we're just going to brush that down, up, across the horizon a bit. Like so, give the brush a quick wash. The most important, as you know, with acrylic, because it will dry on your brushes and ruin them. Okay, I'm going to go into some orange here. Blend it again with a bit of the slow dry and medium and we're just going to blend some of that orange just loosely into the um, painting like this now what we're going to end up with down here hopefully is some water with some description and we should have some sky reflected in that then. Right now without washing the brush I'm going to go back into my palette and I'm going to grab some cadmium red just on the tip of the brush like so. Once again add a touch with a slow drying medium just to the brush and we'll bring this into the sky up here and incorporate a bit of it down here. Right, I'm just going to try to brush that out and blend it a bit. So there we have it, we've got some nice sunrise or sunset colours. Let's call it a sunset. Actually on the canvas now. Give the brush wash. I've got a spray bottle here, just with water, a fine mister. And I'm just going to give this a quick spray just to keep it moist. Take a fan brush. I think we'll have this one. And I'm going to get some blue and some red. Well, actually no, I won't. I'll get blue 
pink and red there on the brush and I'm just going to mix these up to make a purple colour which is you've got a bit of a job to see it's nearly the same colour as the lid I'm going to add a touch of slow dry medium to that and then with the corner of the brush we're just going to lay in just a faint cloud here and there nothing too special nothing too hard I mean I'm trying to keep this as simple and as easy as I possibly can I'm just going to do the same down below here because um, we don't know what's going to happen down there yet with water and what have you right good now with my blending brush, my softening brush, I'm just going to soften these out so that they look just like gentle clouds. And this is just using a very, very, very light touch. A very light touch. So just gently blending the paint, softening it into the canvas like so okay so far so good now just wash my fan brush out my fan brushes are my favourite brushes I use them for so much it's unbelievable they're absolutely lovely things to use what we're going to have now we're going to mix up some more paint and we're going to have some darker tones so I think what we need is maybe a, a blue so I'm just putting some blue on the palette there into that I'm going to add some white and you will have noticed on my palette I've actually got two lots of white and um, the reason is I use one for mixing colour and I use another for just pure white so every time I go into the one that I want to use for pure white I make sure that I've got a absolutely clean brush so that it doesn't um, so it doesn't dirty the white and uh, and ruin it so one white on the palette is for mixing with other colors the other is just when I want to use pure titanium white okay now we've got a pale blue mixture palish blue on the palette there bluey mauve and I'll just use blue, red and white to mix that colour. Okay, so in the distance here somewhere, I think we'll have... some distant hills, or they could be mountains or whatever it may be. Now you'll find, as I'm brushing this on, it will mix, hopefully, the paint that's on the on the actual canvas where I spray it with water it should have kept that paint wet enough for me to actually mix that with the paint that's in the background and it will just pick up some of the colour tone from the sky like so I hope that's coming across there you've got lots of little highlights here little bits from the sky coming in and the whole colour is blending with the sky now without washing the brush I'm going to go into a darker blue and this is Prussian blue and I've just got a little bit on the corner of the brush here and I'm going to mix that with the blue that I've already blended on the on the palette. 
Okay, so we've got a slightly darker tone there. And then here, just working quite randomly here. Literally just brushing things in here. Maybe we've got another landmass. And I hope you can see the actual colour difference there. And as things come closer to the foreground, the actual tonal value becomes more saturated. Not necessarily darker, but more saturated. And it will send off our first layer here into the background by doing that. Okay, so there we've got two layers of scenery. Okay, we've got some distant scenery in the background. We've got something closer up. And I think I'll add some more Prussian blue to that. Darken it even more. And just add a little something that's even closer still, maybe here. Maybe a foothill of some description coming down. Sweeping down maybe into the water or whatever it is. Hopefully what will be the water. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some different layers of land on there now. Different layers to work with. Now just washing the brush. I'm going to go back in with, the, with this brush. It's clean now. And I'm just going to pull this down. Okay, and it will start giving us some sort of horizon where the edge of the water is sitting. So I'm just putting this down. Like so. And then we're going to drag across. Okay, that's starting to take shape, I think. Just a bit of blend in here. Get our horizon so it's sort of looking like something. Right, that's not looking too bad so far. So far, so good. For anyone that's never painted before, this would probably be a good one to start with. There's a lot of um, little useful technique in this one so far. Give the brush a wash. And I think what we'll do at this point, we'll take a palette knife, pick up some white on the palette knife. Okay. And I think we'll blend it with a touch of yellow. And we'll just pick up a little roll of that on the edge of the knife. Okay, so we've got a little tiny roll of paint on the edge of the knife, very, very fine. And with that, I'm just going to start 
laying in a line where the water meets the land. So, you know, a little, little more here. I have a couple of ripples running down the water here, I think. And I'm just literally running across with a knife so just taking you can see that the paint's actually marbled here so I've got the yellow up here the white I haven't mixed it thoroughly I've left it marbled okay so I'm just grabbing a little roll a little tiny roll of paint on the edge of the knife okay can you see that just a little roll of paint there we go you can see it there I'm just going to go back into here and I'm just going to add just the faintest ripple or two to the picture like so okay that's not looking too bad at all at the moment a really good one for you to try really nice looking really good so far I think with a smaller brush maybe this one doesn't matter whichever one you fancy really when you're using it so we've got a smaller brush there I'm going to take some black Put it on the palette there. Okay, you find that if you actually you can mix the colours straight in the um, in the Stabrek palette, but you find that if you do that, once you put the lid on, you come back to it after a couple of days. If the sponges are too wet in the palette, they'll make your paint runny, and you don't want that. So I tend to mix my colours on the lid, so I'm not wasting any paint really. Um, just mix some colour there. And then down here in the foreground somewhere, well, I think we just have a little, a little something, a little rocky outcrop of some description there. You know, make it random. Don't be too um, fussy about it. Like so, we could add a little bit of light to that, maybe. So we'll just give that brush a wash and we'll just dip it into the yellow white mixture that we used for the ripples and maybe just put a hint. Just here and there, with some light on there. Maybe some little bushy things going on down there. Give the brush a wash. Now with a fine brush, if we can find it, there we go. Okay, give that a bit of water, come into the black, add some water to that. You want this so that it's sort of ink like, quite runny, so that it comes off the brush easily.
and we're just going to add down here just a couple of random grasses maybe just a couple of things growing down here just had a bit of foreground interest really doesn't have to be too special too technical I mean literally quite random um, maybe put a seed head or two on there just to show that it is actually grass of some description maybe have some off of this corner coming in there okay and we're just going to add just the hint of a seed head here and there a few little things growing like so okay all good and then of course up in the sky I don't think anything would be um, complete without the obligatory bird in the distance okay could be an eagle could be could be anything that's very eagle like actually Right, a signature down here in the corner somewhere. And I think we'll call that one done. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, as I said, this is for beginners. It's something that they can, they can try, you know, with a fairly limited palette. I haven't used a great deal of, of colour in this. Um, you can see the colours I've used by looking at this palette lid here and um, of course these will be on the screen I'll actually write them up on the screen you know if you've enjoyed it as I said please hit the subscribe and the like button and press that bell next to the uh, subscribe button so that you're informed of when the new tutorials come out um, Shall we put this one in a competition? Well, there's a question. Let me just have a drink of tea while I contemplate that. Would anyone like to win this? I don't know, what can I get you to do to, to win it? I think what we need for this one, if you'd like to win this one, leave a comment on YouTube and um, send me your email address. If you give me your email address and you leave a comment, I will draw this one in maybe a week's time so we'll have a draw draw for this seven days from there if you can't leave a comment on youtube and you still want to comment then follow the link that you'll find below to my website and go to my contacts page leave me a comment and leave me your email address and um, you will be in the draw for this seven days time somebody will be winning this picture It'll be posted absolutely free, it won't cost you anything, and I can post it anywhere in the world. So, hope you've enjoyed it. That's all for this one. Um, we'll see what it looks like in a frame in a moment. And uh, thanks very much.